Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. Uh, last week I uploaded, like everybody else on Booktube, I uploaded my version of the mid-year book Freakout Tag. Um, you know, all the, the best books and surprises. Uh, if you haven't watched it and if you're interested, I will leave a link uh, to my video down below. Uh, and I made this video, the mid-year book Freakout Tag, exclusively about novels because some of the questions were not really suitable uh, for nonfiction and I wanted to focus. Um, but I got quite some comments, uh, people being interested in the sort of nonfiction version of it. Um, some because they just want to <laughs> know the flops and others because they thought, well, you read a lot of nonfiction. Why don't you also make a video about nonfiction? Which is absolutely true. And that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to do all the questions of the uh, mid-year book freakout tag because that they don't make sense. But I have five questions about the best books and the biggest surprise um, and the books that I haven't gotten to and, look, uh, and the books that I'm looking forward to. And this time solely about nonfiction. And the first prompt, quote unquote, because it's not a tag, but it's just my way of organizing this video, is that I thought I'd talk about the top three nonfiction books that I've read so far in 2021. Um, not necessarily books that have been published in 2021 or even in 2020. Some of them are older, so just the books that I read in the first six months of 2021. And this wasn't even that easy to come up with the top three. I read uh, so far 37 nonfiction books and most of them were four star reads. I had a couple of disappointments and a couple of books that I didn't like that much, but really most of them were just excellent, excellent books. But I had to pick three. At least, I mean, I had to. <laughs> That's what I told myself I had to pick three. So one of the books that I certainly want to talk about in the top three is a book that I have been raving about, and that is Christina Thompson's book, Sea People, about uh, Polynesia, the Polynesian islands, um, how they were populated, how they were, quote unquote, discovered uh, by Europeans um, from the you know 1600s onwards. Um, I thought this was an absolutely fascinating book about the history of a part of the world that I really know very, very little about. Uh, Christina Thompson um, is, uh, was born in Switzerland but grew up in Boston um, and uh, she married a, a, a Maori uh, man from New Zealand and her first book was about this sort of first contact between the European culture and the uh, New Zealand Maori culture, and she called it a come on shore, we will kill and eat you all, <laughs> which I'm planning on reading soon. Um, and again, this one, the Polynesian book, uh, was published, I think, two years uh, ago, uh, uh, 2019, and it really tells us the story of the first contact between Europeans and people who live in the Polynesian uh, Triangle. But then also it explores the question, where did these people who inhabit the Polynesian islands, where did they come from? Um, I thought it was brilliantly written, engaging, really interesting. I learned a lot, but it's also, um, it has humor. Um, and I watched a couple of talks Christina Thompson gave, and I think it, she is just fascinating. Um, so that is certainly one um, in the, the, the top three reads nonfiction of this year. The second book in my uh, top three is actually uh, quite a new release, um, was released last year, and that is Natalie Haynes' uh, Pandora's Jar. Uh, Natalie Haynes is a British um, writer, comedian. Uh, she calls herself a classicist. She, she studied the classics and she uh, wrote about it. Uh, one of her books is a, a novel about uh, Jocasta's children, you might have heard and this uh, about it, and this is her latest release. Um, a non-fiction account of famous women in Greek myth and what we 
what kind of image we have of them and whether that image image is correct. And the, um, the title character Pandora, um, you know, we, we all know about Pandora's box and then it turns out this was a translation mistake and she actually, actually had a jar and not a box. But that is not the main issue. The main issue here is that the women um, that are portrayed in the book, like I said, they all have in modern times, quote unquote, which means you know, after the 1600s, um, gained a certain reputation, a certain image. Um, you know, Pandora is, for instance, is regarded as the evil Eve. Um, she brought uh, despair and evil to the world by opening her box, quote unquote. Um, but you also have um, women like Helen, uh, who, who caused the, the Trojan War, at least that's what we learn. Uh, you have Medusa, um, who have, you know, the, the woman with the snake head. Um, and it's, I thought it was really, really interesting. And it, it, it sort of fits the zeitgeist where you have a lot of these retellings from a female perspective, you know, whether it's Madeline Miller's Circe or whether it's Pat Barker, um, uh, the, the, the talk about the, the Trojan War, Natalie Haynes about the Thousand Ships. That's another book she wrote about the Trojan War from a female perspective. So there are quite some books uh, trying to reclaim the female voice uh, from um, ancient uh, uh, tales or laws or myths. And I think this one, this book, for, for those of you who are interested in, in mythology and especially how distorted some of our images are that we have of these women, I think this is a, a really fascinating read. And I thought... Um, it, it's worth a place in in my uh, top uh, three books, nonfiction books that I've read so far. The other book um, that made it in the top three um, is a book that I haven't talked uh, about that much, and that is A Small Place by Jamaica Kincaid, published in 1988. Uh, Jamaica Kincaid is a Caribbean author, but not from Jamaica. Um, and this book is about her home island, her hometown. Kincaid was born in St. John, which is um, the main um, place on Antigua, but it's still a small place. Um, and this very short essay is an, an a j'accuse uh, of a, an author, a Caribbean author, uh, really telling us, uh, white folks, uh, colonialists, um, how much suffering and destruction we caused from the early times on and still going on with tourism and, the, you know, the, 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 the mass tourism to these islands, what our image, again, what our image is about people like that. I thought it was it was really, it's a really angry essay, uh, but still uh, uh, Jamaica Kincaid manages to, um, you know, not let her anger uh, get in the way of a good essay or a good argument, a good structure. So she can sort of hold her anger in her hand and use it without it flying all over the place. Um, and she really tackles, even though it's just a short essay, she tackles the history of her hometown, her home island, and the, the, the bad influence, if you euphemism um, that uh, white explorer, Western explorers and, and Western tourism has on this island from uh, the early days until uh, today, or at least until 1988. I thought it was brilliant. I loved the way that she didn't sugarcoat anything. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's really, really good. Next up, sort of following my regular top and flop um, structure, is The Biggest Surprise. So this was a good book. Um, I didn't make it, obviously, into the top three. Um, but like I told you before, I read really, really excellent nonfiction in the first half. But it surprised me. 
And that is Janice Ray's book, um, Ecology of a Cracker Childhood, a memoir published in 1999. And I read this book, um, I had never heard of, of the book, but I read it because it was the, I can't remember, February or March pick of the uh, Naturalist book book club, the Book Naturalist Book Club, uh, run by Doris from um, uh, all the books and Heidi from My Reading Life. I will leave a link to the Instagram uh, account of the Naturalist Book Club down below. You can check it out. And they picked um, or pick a book or, or sometimes two uh, about nature. So nature writing, whether it's a memoir or whether it's um, uh, some other nonfiction about nature each month. Um, and then you know, we we, uh, we read this together and talk about it. And this one, Janice Ray, and I checked it. It's not Janice, it's Janice, but it's misspelled on her birth certificate, as she t tells us in her uh, memoir. But anyway, Ray is an ecologist, an environmental activist, and she grew up in a junkyard um, in uh, off Highway 1 uh, in South Georgia. So if you take Highway 1, obviously, to Florida, um, then you cross, you come close to her, um, uh, where she grew up. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And she, I, first of all, I had no idea what cracker means other than the stuff that you eat. Uh, but it was it 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 was a book that I would certainly never have picked up if it hadn't been the group read for that month. I'm not that interested in this kind of memoir. Um, I only recently got into nature writing, so yeah, it it it's really. Um, interesting um, uh, account of an interesting, albeit a bit weird childhood, but also about nature and what it meant and means to her. So I really, really enjoyed it. And it was certainly one of my biggest surprises um, in the first half of the year. On to uh, my biggest disappointment. And I only picked one. Um, first of all, because that's how it is phrased in the media uh, book, Freak Out Tech, your biggest disappointment. But also, like I told you, I didn't have that many disappointments. Um, and in addition, for me, a disappointment is not so much a book um, that I read and that I didn't enjoy that much or that, you know, I thought was boring uh, or whatever. But a disappointment is a book that I'm looking forward to and then it didn't deliver. Um, and one of the biggest disappointments I had was certainly this book uh, by Sonia Shah, The Next Great uh, Migration, published in 2020. I, Sonia Shah is an American science journalist, and I read uh, a previous book by her uh, about malaria, the fever, and I thought that was really excellent. Um, she also wrote a book about uh, pandemics, um, which I haven't read yet, and I don't think I will uh, after this disappointment. Uh, and I would have read this book anyway, because it is about our view on migration and how uh, we in the West in particular view people coming from other countries uh, to our country uh, a lot of time, at least if we're talking politics, we view those migrations negatively. Uh, um, and her idea of the book is to show us uh, that that is the wrong approach. I can certainly go with that. Uh, and I thought it was interesting. I was looking forward to it. And then it was um, part of the BookTube Prize, I think quarterfinals, uh, nonfiction. So I had to read it anyway. And uh, I was really, really angered by the book. Um, in the beginning, she tries to give us a couple of examples um, how we mis, um, misjudge uh, migrations. And she recalls or she talks about an incident um, that happened in Cologne, where I live. Uh, and New Year's Eve, a couple of years ago, uh, people are always partying uh, on the big square in front of the uh, central station. And there were hundreds of people there and uh, 10 or 20 women were sexually assaulted by a group of men. And these group of, the group of men happened to be uh, migrants, refugees. Um, and the way she talks about it in the book 
is as if these women filed um, reports that weren't true, which is absolutely not the case. Because I, I you know, I followed it, um, how it uh, it was uh, talked about in the press, and then the the men, most of the men were arrested, and anyway. So this is an example of an author telling me something that I know is not true, and then I can't trust this author anymore. Doesn't matter whether everything else in the book is true and valid, it's over for me. So I'm not going to read um, any other book by Sonia Shah ever, uh, because I just lost, completely lost trust um, in her ability to do proper research and to tell me the truth. So. There you go. My biggest disappointment, The Next Great Migration by Sonia Shah. The next question I took from the mid-year book freak attack is the question, um, a book that was published in 2021, first half, and you wanted to read but didn't get to. I could make a whole video of all the books, non-fiction books that were published in the first half that I didn't get to. Um, but I again, I uh, wanted to pick only one and because June was Caribbean, and I really wanted to read this book for Caribbean and didn't get to it. Um, I picked Edward Danticat, um, Beginnings and Salt, her essays, uh, she calls it Essays on the Journey Through Literature. Uh, the book was published in April, uh, beginning of April, um, and Edward Danticat uh, is an uh, author from Haiti, living uh, in the U.S., um, and I really find her very interesting. Not all of her books work for me. Uh, some I really love, uh, like uh, Claire of the Sea Light, that worked really well for me. Others didn't quite, but I find her a really interesting writer. And so when I saw that she had a kind of memoir essay collection coming out, I definitely wanted to read it. And I didn't get to it. But there's still hope. There's still almost half a year left in the year, so who knows? And then the last question, also taken from the Mid-Year Book Freak Attack, is books, um, new releases in the second half uh, that you are looking forward to. Uh, and I have two. Um, um, I mean, two that I want to talk about here. There are, as always, many more. Uh, but And the first one is um, a kind of kind of sort of biography of Fanny Lou Hamer, um, Keisha and Blaine Until I'm Free, and expected publication is October. Uh, but I said kind of a biography because it mixes um, um, essays about social justice uh, with the biography. So it's not a straightforward, you know, birth to death biography, which is fine by me because most of the time those biographies bore me. Uh, Keisha and Blaine, the author, is an American uh, historian, U.S. American historian, I should uh, say, um, and Fannie Lou Hamer, of course, was a famous activist uh, for the right to vote. I'm really, really looking forward uh, to that book. And the second book um, that I want to mention that I'm looking forward to is uh, by Rafia Sakaria, um, Against White Feminism, and that book will be published in August. Rafia Sakaria is a Pakistani journalist and writer, and I read two previous books by her that I thought were really, really good. Uh, a short um, um, essay, nonfiction book about the veil, and uh, a book, uh, The Upstairs Wife, um, a family memoir uh, about uh, polygamy and life in Pakistan. And both books I thought were really, really good. So this one, the new one, tackles um, a, an important issue, at least to me as a white feminist, um, and intersectionality, you know, the, the, the way that white feminism dominated feminism uh, in the past and has excluded other women, uh, whether they were uh, of a different uh, skin color or race or often also a different class. Um, and I'm really interested in learning more and reading more um, about this issue. So this one, uh, Against White Feminism, is one of the books that I'm greatly looking forward to. Anyway, this was it for my kind of mid-year book freakout tag nonfiction version. Uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments, and I'll see you all soon in the next one.